What's going on, new gamers? Today we're back with some more Outriders World Slayer. Today I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on how they could improve or what I think they probably should have done in order to make the World Slayer DLC absolutely amazing. So if you want to know what I think, what fixes or what should have been implemented in World Slayer in order to make it truly great, then stay tuned. What's coming up next? Welcome back everybody, today is going to be my thoughts on World Slayer, how I think it is currently and what I'm hoping a few things they can kind of implement and what I think a few missed opportunities are with the World Slayer DLC. Now just so you know this is not a hit piece, I am not going out of my way to say how bad the game is, I actually really enjoy Outriders, however I do think they've missed a few golden opportunities to make this game absolutely great and I would really like to see if they do continue to make this into a franchise, I'd love to see some of this implemented in the future. As always if you enjoy this video a like would be super appreciated and if you'd like to become a member of the channel then why not hit the subscribe and bell icon or follow me over on Twitter. But for now. Let's jump in. So by now you probably know they've done an absolutely huge overhaul. The last update shifted quite a few things around. It smashed some builds to pieces. It changed a little bit of the meta. They put in some good things, some probably not so good things depending on your build. But there were a few things that were undoubtedly needed. The main one out of all of it was item locking. Now when you're on your class or your character should I say, you're going to bop over to the piece of gear you need and holding in the right analog stick on the Xbox very least means you're going to now lock this and can't accidentally dismantle it especially if you're kind of farming for that purple gear you've probably got rid of a few I have myself now this one is locked in place meaning you can't dismantle it accidentally unless you take off the lock function this is a much needed feature it's been needed from the start and finally we've got it so it's a great step in the right direction however one thing that we've needed and needed for a very long time which I'm very surprised wasn't implemented at the start of the game one thing we've definitely been missing is loadouts. Loadouts in a game this big with this many armor sets and variations of builds where it's pretty much completely designed around having fun with builds is almost essential. It takes a long time to swap things around and you haven't got the most loot space available meaning that most times swapping things in that is a bit of a nightmare so you'll very often just stick with the same set over and over. Loadouts would make this so much easier even if it was somewhere you just went to didn't have any extra stash or anything but you clicked a button and you were able to change a loadout that would make this game a lot easier and it would make it more viable for certain levels and such. For example, if you've got a level that you know is going to have a lot of enemies in it that are going to be toting guns, you may want a completely different loadout to what you're doing normally. Loadouts, in my opinion, would make this game much, much better and a lot easier for sorting out your gear and such. Next up, and I'm going to jump straight in at the Trials of Turia Gratar. Turia Gratar, I said from the start, was a massive step in the right direction. It's a really nice idea, it's kind of like a mini raid or an extended dungeon of sorts. Obviously it finally had targeted loot, but after playing it for a ridiculous amount of times, there's quite a few issues with this as the end game. For an end game activity, it's very repetitive. I know all end game activities are, so you're probably going to be chucking that in the comments, but they could have made this just a little bit more fun. Every single area is set in stone, there's no variations, everything's the same from the enemies to the map layer to the rooms, everything is exactly the same every single time. And with how many times they want you to run this actual arena, after a little while I must admit it just gets a little bit on the monotonous side. You've seen everything, you've done everything, you know where it's going to be, you know where the enemies are going to be, that's all well and good if you're trying to get speedruns. But for the average gamer, especially if you're trying to just have a little bit of fun, I think they should in fact have made this a randomly generated dungeon. Or at the very least made it so you get randomly generated bosses in certain areas. This would at least give you a little bit of a change up, a bit of variety and it wouldn't always be the same over and over. If you had randomly spawning enemies or bosses, if the rooms changed from time to time, it would make this a lot more fun running it over and over again because you wouldn't always know exactly what to expect. Also, whoever told them it was a great idea to put in three of the same boss into one kind of long expedition or trial, should I say, 
is absolutely insane. Prepare yourself, Outrider. For what? To see me over and over again. The variety is just not there, and having the Arbiter twice, and then once you've completed it, a secret area unlocks, and you get a different version of the exact same fella, another Arbiter, is just not fun. They should 100% have made it, so that you had a different boss appearing, or just had a few different bosses, especially the end boss during the trial, because again, like I said, running it this amount of times, seeing that fella that many times, is just going to make things a little bit boring and tedious. Next up, and one that I have already done a video on, we will not unfortunately looks like be getting this, but I would say loot space. Loot space is a massive issue in Outriders. You now have so much gear dropping on the floor that I don't think you can even hold one of everything. If you're trying to do multiple builds, if you're trying to do multiple characters, and you're trying to get hands on a lot of variations of weapons, it is just so difficult to maintain that in your stash. You're probably going to have a mule character or so, just so that you've got a little bit of extra space on them, that you can chuck things over to them, especially, like I said, if you're trying multiple sets of gear. Loot space is a big old issue with Outriders, and from the last response I saw on Reddit, it may in fact look like they can't actually upgrade it. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. If so, we're definitely stuck with that 100, we will have to get used to it, and you will need to start dismantling a little bit more of your loot and just keeping hold of the best ones. But like I said, in a game all about build variety, loot space is key, and I think we probably need around 200 to make things ideal. Hopefully if further down the line they can do this, it'd be amazing, but for the moment it definitely looks like we're kind of stuck where we are, so we're just going to have to live with it. Next up, we're going to be going over the XP, and we're going to be going over the resources. The Anomaly Extract is still, it has been raised, which is nice, by 5%, and the XP has been raised by 10%. However, after playing a few more of these expeditions and by playing a few more of the Trials of Terry Gratar, I can tell you because of the actual adjustments to the builds and obviously Mage's Rage, which was always going to take a bit of a beating to be perfectly honest because it was overperforming, but it now means most builds, I don't know if there's any broken ones now, but most builds will be taking a lot longer to complete their activities. Probably at least 20% longer, maybe even a little bit over that. So, 10% extra XP is not actually anywhere near enough. Because when you're running things such as the Trials of Tari Gratar, it's going to be taking you a lot longer than that in order to complete it. It's taking you longer to kill the enemies, it's taking you longer to kill the bosses, and overall, it's taking you longer to get that XP. Meaning 10% extra probably isn't going to cover what you've already lost because of the added duration you're taking to do the runs and such. I think this is one thing they really need to look at because it is very grindy. It's one of the grindiest games I've ever played and they've already stated that they think most people will be playing this game because of the build diversity and just having fun with builds and such. However, I think the key aspect they're not taking into that is that most people like to be doing that at the very end game. When you're at your max level, when you've got the highest amount of damage you can be getting and you're seeing everything perfected, that's when it all starts to shine. If a lot of players are dropping off before then, because they just can't take the grind to get to there, then I feel like they definitely need to address that, and 10% at the moment, unfortunately, is not going to do it. So for me, one thing they definitely need to relook at is that XP grind, because a lot of people are going to fall off before they make it to reach that tier 40 apocalypse level. Now for the last one, even though they have probably got some of the best weapons and best armor sets I've seen in any game for an absolute age, I feel like they need to adjust the loot a little bit. Not just the drops, but in general, and I think this actually revolves around quite a lot of games now. If you look back at older games such as World of Warcraft or Guild Wars and other such things as that, the key element was that you were gearing up in preparation for the toughest content and there you managed to get even more powerful gear, especially if you were doing raids and such. I think they need to go a little bit back to those days where you're progressing that way and you're aiming for some of the best gear because you've managed to level up your previous gear. Now obviously this isn't always possible, 
but sometimes they can do it by defeating the last boss you're going to get tokens you'll be able to reward you'll be rewarded with certain things even in this if they weren't able to implement that and they could have made it so that the last boss would drop that certain martyr gear very very low chance and the martyr gear was very very good even if it just had a distinctive thing that it did didn't have to be the best but could be pretty amazing in some builds or just made some key areas shine then that would have been something to aim for they could have made it you'd only get on that special last arbiter once you complete the trials of tarik Ratar, and then upon beating him you would get extra resources maybe anomaly extract maybe a lot of xp some reason for actually doing him at the moment he has a higher chance of dropping a gear set that nobody uses and he doesn't give you much else there's definitely a few things they could have looked at in order to make some of the gear especially that martyr gear which probably should have been one of the best ones a little bit better and a little bit more worthwhile and while they were there like i said they could have made it so the anomaly extract and the xp was boosted because you'd already previously completed the trial and now you're bopping onto a tougher enemy Right you gamers, I'm not trying to whinge, I'm just putting a few ideas out there, that's some of the things that I think definitely still need to be implemented in the game, if not hopefully they'll have a think about some of this maybe for the sequel if there is one depending on the player base, but for me I think it's still too grindy, I really enjoy playing this game, but getting those classes all the way up to 40 is an absolute time sink and a lot of people just don't have that especially when like i said quite a few of the classes now will have taken a bit of a knock will have taken a bit of a knock from that last patch meaning it will take a bit longer for them to clear the content let me know in the comments what you guys and girls think as always full things gaming full things xbox take care i'll see you on the next day